we join together in this prayer that Jesus taught us. Come, let us pray together. Let us join together in praying the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, For our meditation this morning, I would like to read from the letter of Paul to the Christian in Philippians, in Philippi, in chapter 4, verses 4 to 13. As I have promised last Wednesday, that I will be preaching on this today. Paul said, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. Amen and amen. Last Wednesday, on my Facebook meditation, I asked, are there situations that are so overwhelming that you cannot that you, that you just cannot help but walk. Church, friends, brothers and sisters, for the Philippians' life was bound to be worrying thing. For times such like these, when life is cast into uncertainty, even to be a human being, to be involved in the human situation in the midst of imminent danger, just like what we are facing today. To be vulnerable to all chances and the changes of this mortal life. To be experiencing a new normal in our everyday lives is it, it is in itself a warning. So I ask you this question this morning. How do we deal with what we are experiencing in this time of uncertainty? How, with God's grace, will we be able to overcome this war? Our worries today. A false solution for us this morning is proclaimed in this text. Paul begins with his admonition, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Rejoice. 
Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Remember that when Paul wrote this letter, he was in prison. He was in prison. These timeless words written by Paul to the Christians at Philippi give us the advice needed to conquer our wars. Do not worry. Now, one of the meanings of the word war in Greek is to divide the mind. So think about this. Paul is saying to us right now not to divide our mind. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when we are worried, we have a divided mind. No wonder James said, a double-minded man is unstable in all ways. James chapter 1 verse 8. People of God, we cannot worry and trust Christ at the same time. So my invitation to you this morning is that let us open our hearts to God and learn from Paul through the power of the Holy Spirit how we can conquer worry our worries in this uncertain time. First thing that we need to bear in mind is that we can conquer worry if we rejoice in the Lord always. Oh, wonderful. Paul did say, rejoice in the Lord in good times. But Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. And he said, I will say it again. Rejoice. Oh, many of you might say, or might react by saying, Paul, Paul doesn't know my world. Paul doesn't know what I am going through in this life. We might even think and feel that Paul was living in a time when it is easy to be a Christian. But the fact is, brothers and sisters, that Paul wrote these words from a Roman prison. He was conquering worry by being rejoicing in the Lord always. By being glad in the Lord always. So I want us to rejoice for what the Lord has done. Church Paul had every reason to be filled with worry because as an apostle of Christ, he was isolated in a prison cell away from most of the world. He could not proclaim the good news to large crowds, he could not visit churches and to be in fellowship with them. He could not be with the people he loved. And in this most trying condition, Paul was conquering his worries and the uncertainties of his tomorrows by rejoicing always for what the Lord had done for him and for his life. So instead of worrying about things we probably cannot change, Hear and listen to what Paul said. Rejoice always. Rejoice for what God has done for you. He has loved you. He has protected you. He has cared for you. He has saved you. How do I know that? Church, look up the cross. The cross is not just a symbol of what Christ has done for each one of, of us. It is a symbol of Christ's love and protection and care and the grace of his saving power. Rejoice, always rejoice for what God has done for you. Rejoice for, 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 for the Lord. For what will the Lord do? Rejoice for what will the Lord do? In the midst of imminent danger and uncertainty, Paul's confidence in the goodness of God was based not only on what God had done, but also on what God would do. Paul knew that worry would not make any difference or contribute significantly any valuable changes in his life. So wonderful and beautiful people of Gladbrook, 
United Methodist Church, to our friends and neighbors, if you have Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior, then you can be sure that God, His grace, mercy, compassion, love, and the fullness of His presence is working in your life. He will always be with you. He will always be wanting His best for you. He will always be loving you. That's why Paul in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 declares, You can be confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry on to completion until that day, until the day of Christ Jesus. We have to rejoice over. The second thing that we need to remember is that we can conquer worry if we pray with the Lord. A Paul declares, do not, do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. The New International Version of, of the Bible renders it in everything. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God in everything. Remember this, brothers and sisters, no prayer, no power. Little prayer, little power. Much prayer, more prayer, more power. Much prayer, much power. If you worry, brothers and sisters, you pray with her. Little or not at all. If you pray much more, you have little or no worry at all. So pray honestly with God. Tell Him your fears. Tell Him your worries. Tell Him your needs. Tell Him your desires. The Bible reveals to us that we have a God that hears. Don't worry about how you phrase your prayer. Just give your heart out to God. Tell Him your fears. Tell Him your worries. Tell Him your needs. Tell Him your desires. Or pray thankfully to God. Or throughout the Bible we are taught that followers of God are be thankful in our prayers. Simply counting our blessings and thanking God for each of them will empower us to conquer our worries and propel us to victorious living. We are even admonished to ask God to teach us to number our days in order to gain a heart of wisdom. Thank Him for everything in your life. Thank Him even in this uncertain time. Thank Him for the gift of prayer. Thank Him that you can count on Him and that you can trust in His care and His love. And then the third thing that we need to remember is that we can conquer worry if we think as the Lord wants us to think. Let me repeat that. We can conquer worry if we think as the Lord wants us to think. Paul reminds us in verses 8 and 9 that we could never conquer our worries until our thought of life, our mindset is changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul knew the truth of Proverbs 27, and I am reading it from the New King James Version. It says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. Oh, listen to what Paul said. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. 
Paul seeks to help us conquer our worries by having us give careful reflection to the thoughts that God wants us to have. Think on things that are true. Think on things that are honorable. Think on things that are just, that are pure, that are lovely, that are good. Oh, brothers and sisters in Christ, God is providing us grace to conquer our worries in these uncertain times. His invitation is come, open your mind and your heart to Christ. Let him come in with his abiding presence and the power to change your life. Then victory and conquest will be ours. Let us pray. Thank you, Father God, for leading us, for giving us this wonderful revelation this morning. When we come to the edge of our worries, when we come to the point where we see no other way. Come, Holy Spirit, reminds us that we have a God reaching out His hand and willing to lift us up and able to say, cast all your cares to me and I will give you rest. Give us that assurance, Father God, in this time of trouble and difficulties. In this uncertain time, may the voice of your Holy Spirit, the voice of our Lord Jesus, may come to us and speak the truth that though the world is also wrong, you are still our ruler. Come, Lord Jesus, empower us to face this most difficult time that we are going through right now and share to us that we have a God that and will always be creating so in this prayer, Father God, I lift up the people of Gladbrook United Baptist Church. Each and every single member of this church, each and every single family of this church, from the youngest to the oldest, Father God, I pray for their perfection in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for their deliverance and healing in the mighty name of Jesus. For those who are not well, you lift them up in our prayers. For those who are grieving and hurting and in pain because of the passing away of their loved ones, like Kathy Kepner, like Deb Custer, like Brent and Susan, we speak the joy of comfort upon them and we beg the Holy Spirit to give that comfort in their hearts. We pray for those who are not well physically, Father God. We have brothers and sisters who are recovering from their medical procedure. We speak your healing upon them. And for those people in the hospital affected by this coronavirus, Father God, we know that your power transcends beyond time and even beyond space. From here in Glasgow, we pray for all the people affected by coronavirus, for those in the hospital, for those in their homes. We speak the power of your healing upon them. Amen. We also pray for our church, the United Methodist Church. We beg, Father God, that you will continue to search and even convict the hearts of your people from the bishop down to the youngest member of our church. Show us your mercy and show us your ways, Father God, so that 
we you will always find the Methodist Church faithful. That we will always be found faithful to you. So pray we, I pray for the church for strength and power. Lord, we have this job to say and to proclaim to the world. This is a good time to be called your people. We pray for our country and the rest of the world for leaders who will go in to find ways on how we combat this coronavirus. We speak to the intelligence and wisdom and the creative mind of our biomedical scientists so that they could come up with something that we can use to heal those who are sick with this virus. We pray for them. We pray for nurses and doctors and those working in the hospital and for those working in, in, in the care centers. Lord, give them protection. Lift up their longings and their desires. Lift up their families and always remind them with your abiding presence how much you love them as you love each one of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen and Amen. If you would like to join me in singing this hymn, Grace Alone, Alone, and you can also at this time pray what you can offer to God. Um, this is the time that we can do that. And it's a wonderful hymn, Grace Alone, and it's on the page we sing in 2160.
to be in our houses and homes. Rejoice in the Lord always. Let me sing this benediction with you. And it is from the faith we sing him, 2281. May you run and not be gay. the Father and of the Son.